SW family and friends. Happy Tuesday. We are getting well into February. And I'm so excited to bring you our Tuesday trivia for today. Um, you may wonder why I'm standing. Uh, my background is the 7-Eleven, the store, the, the 7-Eleven sign in the store with the colors, the red and green stripes, colors and orange. I am standing in front of the 7-Eleven. You may be wondering why, but I'm going to reveal that in a minute because the 7-Eleven has a very special connection to me and our Tuesday trivia artist that we're learning about for, for today. But before we get, do that, let's get to our moving and grooving. This song is from 1992, TLC, and actually, 1992 and the 7-Eleven all have a very special connection to me and our Tuesday trivia person for today. So let's get to some moving and grooving, and then we'll get to our Tuesday trivia for today, okay? artist for today is the legendary actor. This is CNN, a network of Turner Broadcasting System. James Earl Jones. Known for his legendary voice, I just played the, the CNN. He used to, um, the, the opening for this the CNN. And in the cable news network, also many people know him as Darth Vader. He did the voice for Darth Vader. Legendary actor, Daniel Jones was born on January 17, 1931, in Alka Butler, Mississippi. So I mean, she was a birthday actor with Betty White and my my late grandmother, so he's born in Alco Butler, Mississippi, which is a very small unincorporated area of Mississippi. He is a multi award winning actor um, with Tony Woods and Emmy Awards. He's one of the few actors who has, few artists who has what is called the EGOT. An artist who has EGOTs mean they have won an Emmy, a Grammy, a Academy Award, and a Tony. So if you, and there, I think there's less than 20 artists who have won EGOTs. So he has an Emmy Award, he has three Tony Awards, he has an Honorary Oscar Award, and he has a Grammy Award. So he is one of, I think there's less than 20 artists 
living in that you have um, an EGOT. So God, whenever I can, instead of asking a bunch of questions, um, I'm always going to do a clip for you the next, because so many of these great artists I talk about and to the trivia have received multiple awards and lifetime achievement awards. So whenever I can, I'm going to share those ceremonies and honor, honorary, honor, honor moments <laughs> with you guys. So in 2002, James Earl Jones was honored with the Kennedy Center Honors. Sydney Poitier did a tribute so it was a little bit poignant. Um, back then, President Bush was president, and you know, there's a little cartoon of him on the clip. I couldn't find another one that said what I wanted, but the clip, there will be a little bit of a cartoon for um, James L. Jones. But again, most people know him not only as the voice of CNN, but the voice of Darth Vader. And when he did that Vader, that was a two hour voiceover job. He really literally worked on that for two hours to do the voice for Darth Vader. It was a two hour voiceover job. All right. So we're going to go to the tribute, the Kennedy Center Honors, to celebrate the legendary work of James Earl Jones. And then when I come back, I come back, I will share my James Earl Jones story on why we've been in front of this 7 11. Ladies and gentlemen, 1995 Kennedy Center honoree, Sidney Poitier. It was in a New York theater in the early days for both of us where I first encountered that presence and that voice. By that time, he had already advanced a long way from his first Broadway line, which was, Mrs. Roosevelt, dinner is served. <laughs> he would move upward on the political horizon, becoming in the 1972 motion picture, The Man, the first African-American president, 20 years before Bill Clinton. <laughs> you were a little slow on that one. There are people who come along in life and in art who have a presence that can capture your attention and hold it. One saw it in The Great White Hope. The critics used words like whirlwind, hurricane, and elemental force. One saw it in Fences. One saw it in The Blacks and King Lear. And Jimmy, when I saw you play Othello, I resolved never to touch that one. <laughs> As I look across these lights to you, seated in that place of honor, I am moved by the power of your artistry and by the professional courage that have brought you to this place on this night. Jimmy, good friend and icon of the American theater, rest assured that our debt to you will always be born with appreciation and grace. Go well, good sir, with the memories of this evening to warm your heart and light your way. Before Jimmy was born, his father left. His mother turned to her parents for help. With 
nine children of their own, there was barely enough. But their farm in Mississippi was home. Times were tough. The family headed north. They told Jimmy they had to leave him behind with other relatives. He clung to the back seat in terror and refused to get out. His grandfather understood there would be no leaving Jimmy again. They left together for Michigan, but the day had left its mark. I had a feeling, he said, that if I stayed very quiet, they would keep me. Talking was so dangerous, he stuttered with every word. One day, his English teacher found him writing a poem and prodded him to read it out loud. I shook like a leaf, he said. But to my amazement, there was no stutter. His teacher led him to a world of poems, plays, and glorious words. He won back his voice and more than he ever expected. This shy country boy had found his claim on the world. After college and the army, he raced to New York, the land of theater and night shifts scrubbing floors. He devoured everything, acting classes, off-Broadway, and experiments in the avant-garde. Summer 1960, Joseph Papp brings Shakespeare to everyone, free and in the park and colorblind. Jimmy entered as a soldier in Henry V, but after four summers and 12 Shakespeare's, people were coming to see him in the lead. He laid out the cruel story with a lion's roar. Then, a role carved from the rocky soil of America's past. A black prize fighter striving for greatness. I'm in the proud of my life. I got my turn to be the champion of the world. I'm taking my turn. Hands up high. Despite his great pride, life will force him to fall. That's why he is. And that's what I'm getting. And I'm going to get it the same saying, yes or no, say it don't matter what I do. I'm in now, you understand? And I don't want you watching. Help him. Ask him. The actor in the play shook the times and trumpeted his stardom on Broadway. He went after roles of complicated men, exposed at the nerve. Wherever he stands is the center of gravity. It was only a two-hour voiceover session, but it launched him into another universe. I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again at last. How do you do? Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. <laughs> this field, this game, is a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good and it could be again. People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. I'm not big and strong to myself, he said. So I like to play characters who reveal their conflicts and vulnerabilities. I don't act to find the answers, but to explore 
the mystery that lives inside each one of us. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles S. Dutton, Kelsey Grammer, and Courtney B. Vance. I played Cassio to his Othello in 1982 when I was a young man in the theater. James Earl Jones, you have no idea how thrilling it was for this young actor to stand on that stage with you every night for those 11 months and see you inhabit the role of Othello. It was as though I was standing on stage with a force of nature. I cried every night like a baby. I would gaze into those magnificent blue eyes and 20 some odd years later all I can recall is what an honor it is to know you. I am proud to have worked with you. I regard you as a a force of nature, the real deal, an actor's actor, one of God's masterpieces. When I was a student at the Yale School of Drama, and you may not remember this, I was your understudy for a production of Hedda Gabler. And although I was attending America's greatest acting school, my real acting classes occurred when I watched you in rehearsals. Your professionalism, your discipline, your zest and love for the craft of acting. We, the students, we spoke your name very slowly. James Earl Jones. And with the utmost respect, we called you then and still call you today the king of the American theater. When I was starting out, there were only two black actors you saw with any regularity, Sidney Poitier in film, and James Earl Jones on the stage. When I was cast as his son in the play Fences, I was a second year acting student at the Yale School of Drama, and I couldn't believe that I was in a play headed for Broadway. I watched him for three years inhabit the role of Troy Maxson and leave an indelible mark on the theater world, and that was my second training ground. He was my father on the stage. He is my surrogate father in life. Everybody called him Jimmy. I couldn't call him that. <laughs> I didn't know what to call him. So I just, I just called him sir. <laughs> and that's what I still call him, <laughs> sir. It may be that James Earl Jones' own words sum up why we honor him tonight. He once said, I am thankful that I have been able to serve my society in a creative way. I believe in the value of artistic endeavor in a society. Maybe art cannot always change minds, but art can change hearts. And sir, I speak for so many when I say that you have changed our hearts forever. 
And we'll leave you with this. Soft you a word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of that. Long live the king. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Again, whenever I can for today trivia, I'm going to show clips of people's work because it's great to know questions about them, a little bit of their history. I think that honor their work. This is a great way for you to see their work. Um, like I said, and I just find it fascinating that he did that video in two hours and as much of it as iconic of an actor has as he is, he's known most for that two hour um voice of what he did for Darth Vader. So how do what is my connection to James Earl Jones and the 7 Eleven? When I was an athlete literally 30 years ago, in 1992, I was cast in a show called The Glass Menagerie of Laura by Tennessee Williams. And I was playing Laura. I was in a bookstore in Chicago called At One Bookstore. So I was in there buying a theater magazine. Someone comes in to the bookstore and says, James O. Jones is in the 7-Eleven. The 7-Eleven was like a block away. So everyone in the store cleared out and we all went running to the 7-Eleven and there was James O. Jones like buying a slurpee. <laughs> I don't exactly remember what he was doing, but I remember he was there and I saw him. I went up to him and I just said, Jones, I love your work. I think you're so amazing. I'm about to do the glass menagerie. And I happened to have my script with me. And he autographed it. Here is a picture of it. As you can see, it's been worn and torn, um, you know, over the years. But I still, I have James Earl Jones' autograph. And what he says was, best wishes. Enjoy Laura and um, that oh, is, well, I probably should put this in a shrine or like a glass case. I don't have one, but that it really meant a lot to me because he was really, really nice. That was in 1992, probably around this time because the show opened in April of um, 92. So who knows? It could have probably around this time 30 years ago when that happened. One of the highlights, highlights of my acting career is not only to meet James Earl Jones, but to get his autograph. So now let's go to our bonus round. Okay, bonus question number one. How many hours did James Earl Jones spend during the Dodge Vader voiceover. How long does it take him? How many hours? It was said in the video, I said it a couple of times. How many hours did James Earl Jones spend during the voiceover for Darth Vader? How many hours? That's bonus question number one. Bonus question number two. Name a play film or TV show that James Earl Jones did. Okay, from the question number two, name a play film or name a play film or television show that James Earl Jones is in. Okay, so it can be either, it can be a play, it can be a movie or a television show. So again, from the question number one, what um, how many hours did James Earl Jones spend doing the voiceover work for Darth Vader? Phone is question number two. Name a film, theater, or television show James Earl Jones did. Please send me those answers or call me and leave it. 
be, be there as a voice for you, all right? Again, if you want to go back and watch and to get those answers that did say how many hours you did a couple times. So this is, again, also working with the UAG and I'm focusing on listening. Please send me an answer to your, um, to the trivia questions, all right? Um, guys, so, cool. All right, guys, so we're gonna end it the way we begin it. This time we're going to 1977, one of my favorite songs from that year, but 1977 was also the year that Star Wars, the movie, came out. Love this song. Give me back to 1977 and this is what I look like in 1977. <laughs> Alright guys, these are these moments for one week and one day. <laughs>